You have drunk and eaten the great repertoire since you were nine. So you, there's very little that you don't know. A lot of people, I find, classic FM listeners are a discerning bunch and they get in touch often with very pertinent inquiries of course. And, and, and suggestions of their own. But I know that a lot of people get quite intimidated by the sheer magnitude of what to listen to next. And it's a problem because everything is so much more available yeah, than it have. was. It was hard to believe that YouTube only started in uh, 2005 yeah. or Spotify or Idagio or whatever it is. And there is this just you can get enormous, everything. enormous jungle of Where things. Where do you go? So yeah, you know, as, a, as a kid, I went to concerts and it was kind of decided yeah. for me. And then you know, I, would, I would get whatever was there. But now the choice is just it's so gigantic. Well, can I pin you down, not, not in a desert island disc sort of way, but a couple of pieces of music that you would really recommend for somebody who's, who's heard the hits. They, they, they know the, the big mega classics, but if they want to go exploring a bit more, where would you send them? But what kind of, what kind of area well, let's, are, are you talking let's about? Let's think of... Uh, late romantic orchestral music, which is so popular with just about everybody in the world. You've heard Rachmaninoff Paganini variations. You love the second symphony and the second piano concerto. What else has Rach Rachmaninoff written that might really turn the light on? Well, there, there are two pieces in particular. Uh, one is, it's a, a, a vocal piece called The Bells, which is about bells, four movements about bells in different seasons. Uh, and a staggering beauty and drama. And it's only when you reach the end of it that you cotton on to the fact that, if, that he's actually talking about a person's life and what from from birth to death and what does that mean uh, and it's interesting because it'll rack man enough often you, you think of him as this big indulgent outpouring of romanticism but he was also an incredibly controlled and intelligent composer that they in a earlier, earlier pieces of his, there is a melody at the very end of the bells, which actually comes on the last two pages of the score. Uh, and it's over in about 20 seconds. And it just simply, it's staggering and it stays you. At another time of his life, he would have played it and played it and played it. But there, it's like a summing up of a whole person's life. Uh, I would really, I would really recommend that piece. Okay. And it, you know, funny to think about Rachmaninoff because you know we think of him as this big swooning Russian uh, romantic, but I mean not only a great pianist but a, apparently a, a stunningly great conductor. When I used to work in Boston with the Boston Symphony a lot, I went back into their archives and discovered that they. At the turn of the century, they were trying to get Rachmaninoff to be their principal conductor because they felt he was the greatest Mozart conductor they had ever come across. <laughs> wasn't uh, expecting to hear that. No, no. Absolutely, but when you hear him play and you look at the pieces, you realise what a, an extraordinary discipline there was. And you know, he had this experience of being uh, you know, basically a refugee in America where the new music was happening and he was desperately, he was felt to be desperately out of date, but was still writing these wonderful, strong pieces. I mean, the symphonic dances right from the end of, oh, yeah. right from the end of his life is one of the great orchestral show pieces. And again, a piece with an immense amount of darkness and passion within it. But it was going on at the same, same thing, you know, Alban Berg had already died. Uh, I mean, it was, it was in the middle and of the modern music. But, you know, the, but the wonderful thing about music is that there are always all these different styles going on at the same, 
at the same time. Uh, that the, you know, there should be no one way in which you can compose.